and you can still um, Hey, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the Fitbit Charge 3 Special Edition. So far, I think it's an amazing product, and with a couple more software updates, I think it's gonna be a really compelling fitness tracker. Continue watching to find out more. So I've been a long time user of the Pebble Time and the Huawei Watch 2. And both these watches are really fantastic. They both have an always on display. The Huawei Watch has a ton of features. It's you know running Wear OS. So um, as a Java developer, it's really, e it's really fun to build apps. The Pebble Time was really easy to use, um, had a decent long battery life. Um, but you know, none of them were really swim proof. And um, I think that the Fitbit Charge 3 kind of comes in the, between both uh, the watches in terms of features and um, in terms of um, its form factor. And unfortunately, Pebble went out of business and they were acquired by Fitbit. So it naturally led me to, you know, looking into the Fitbit charge. I've been doing a ton of research on fitness trackers and there are so many, you know, there's the, the cheap Chinese brands like the Huawei, um, then you have the more expensive like Apple Watches and the Garmin. So then why did I pick the Fitbit Charge 3? Well, aside from not wanting a bulky smartwatch, um, there are two reasons. One is Fitbit Pay and the other is the SPO2 sensor. Okay, so what is Fitbit Pay? Well, I, I've been really accustomed to uh, Wear OS's uh, Google Pay and I like to be able to leave my wallet at home, my phone at home while I go to the gym and then when I leave the gym I can just, you know, go to the grocery store and pick up some food on the way. So it's really convenient to not have to carry your wallet and your phone on you all the time when you want to make purchases. And the reason why the SpO2 sensor is so important to me is because I have sleep apnea. And sleep apnea is just a condition where you stop breathing uh, when you're falling, when you're when you're actually sleeping. And uh, I, I wear this uh, mask, it's called CPAP therapy, and I want to be able to compare the results of the CPAP therapy with the SpO2 uh, readings. But here's the thing, none of those actually work for me right now. That really sucks. This is completely ridiculous. Apparently Fitbit is working on a sleep beta app uh, that I hope includes the SpO2 uh, sensor readings, but I'm not part of that beta and I am not sure how to get in. I really hope that they release this feature sooner than later because this is the main reason why I chose the Fitbit, uh, Fitbit Charge 3. Now of course, Garmin already has um, this feature available and it's uh, codenamed PulseOx. And you know, if Garmin, if Garmin can have this on their Vivo Smart fitness trackers, why can't Fitbit uh, do the same thing too? They can go through the same regulations and you know, put in the work to get it out where, um, to get this feature out. So please, Fitbit, if you're listening to this video, I really need this feature. Now, and for Fitbit Pay, the reason why it doesn't work for me currently is I live in Canada, and in Canada, we adopt technology very slowly. Uh, currently, there are only three, um, three banks supporting Fitbit Pay in Canada, and two of them are very esoteric. I've signed up with Brim Financial, which is a startup in Toronto that, it's a startup based on credit cards, and they apparently work with Fitbit Pay. So I've applied, and I'm waiting for my application to be approved and I will keep you posted if this, if this financial institution actually works with Fitbit Pay. So let's talk about the physical aspect of this watch. And you know, I really like how light it is and how small it is. It, it's barely, you barely notice it when you're sleeping. It's um, you know, really small so, and it's really light. It's around 30 grams. And you know, compared to watches like this, these are like 57 grams and, and they can go way heavier. This is really important for me. Um, something that is unobtrusive and you know, easy to easy to wear day to day all the time. I really think they nailed this, and it feels really good on the wrist. And I think part of that are the straps. The straps are really good quality. Um, the rubber or the silicone that is provided is really nice. What's even cooler is that how it's so easy to uh, disconnect and reconnect them. You know, you just take it out like that, and you just plop it back in. Do that. One thing I really don't like is the strap that comes in the special edition, and it's the white strap. You have the other choice of the lavender woven, which is like a soft polyester. And I like that material, but the color is pretty feminine. And I do think the white watch is still pretty feminine. And it, it does look like a toy. And, and it really screams like, hey, I got a Fitbit. Everyone look at me. I got a Fitbit. Come take it, you know. Uh, I prefer the black uh, textured design strap. Um, it comes with all the special editions. So you get two straps, um, the special strap and then the regular black strap. And uh, I really think it's unfortunate because, you know, if I want to get, you know, the sports band, you know, with the perforated, um, the, the holes, 
or the lavender one, I, the gray lavender one, which is uh, you know more custom for me, I have to go out and spend another forty dollars. So I really wish Fitbit would offer you know would offer different options for the special edition on straps. I really do think that sucks, and I might even email them and ask them, "Hey, can I you know trade in my white?" special edition strap for the black one or a gray um, gray woven one. For the OLED display, I find it you know pretty big, big enough, and with the all black design, the, the, the large bezels are also black, um, it makes the screen seem bigger than it is. And you know I'm able to read notifications, no problem. So um, I like the OLED uh, display. Another cool feature about the OLED screen is that you can use um, pretty thin wintered gloves and they don't need the special touchscreen coating on the tips. And you can still use it so um, for some gloves it works pretty well it's pretty sensitive so um, that's a big plus in the winter time let's talk about things that i don't really like about the watch and the first biggest one i think this might hit a lot of people is this isn't an always on display and you know as a basic um, watch i think this is a super important feature because you don't want to be um, having to tilt your arm kind of like doing this all the time there's two ways to do it one is that you can hold the button on this on the left side to turn on the screen, um, you could double tap, or you obviously can do the tilt gesture. And you know, sometimes I'm like, you know, maybe in a meeting, and I don't want anyone to see that I'm looking at the time. I would nice. It would be nice to just be able to glance at it, like you know, the watch is down here. I'm just like, like kind of like that. So that really sucks. Um, it's something to get used to. I can live with it. They should at least let the user maybe enable always on display, and obviously it would sacrifice battery life. But I think this is a really important feature that this watch is missing. So another thing that really annoys me about this watch is that um, the single button is on the left side and obviously I wear my watch on my left hand and I have to use my thumb to, you know, you have to squeeze it pretty hard too to like and activate the button so you squeeze it and it just doesn't feel very uh, intuitive or it doesn't feel very comfortable and especially in certain, certain situations where you're navigating through menus you have to use the bat you have to use the button to exit um, quite often and I find it that it's like I feel like the motion is not as intuitive if I could use my index finger, which is a lot more nimble. Um, so it's just pressing that instead of this. So, you know, the Apple Watch, my, my Huawei Watch, um, all the buttons are on the right side of the watch face as opposed to the left side. So I think this is kind of annoying because, and you can't also, you know, rotate the screen 180 degrees. Um, so that the button appears on the right side. Um, you can't do that with the current software. I'll say one thing about the button though. I really like that it's it's very responsive. It, the haptic feedback when you squeeze it um, feels really, really good. And obviously it's not a real button. And they made it so that it, this watch can be uh, swim proof, which is a really important feature that I was looking for in this watch as well. Okay, so moving on to software. Swipe down for notifications. Swipe up to see all your stats. And here you don't really interact with it. You can see your battery life at the top. And then if you scroll down, you can see your steps, your goals, your heart rate, calories burned, stairs, stairs climbed, uh, sleep tracking and, and whatnot. So water and all that stuff. Some of these items at the bottom here, you have to use the phone app to turn on. Here you can see the watch face up here at the top. You'll see that there is uh, my steps and this is the current time. It's 2.21 AM and November 10th. And uh, if you swipe to the right, you can get all the apps. Here, there are six apps, and you can't install any other apps. You can't rearrange the order, which kind of sucks because sometimes I just want to check the weather, and I don't really care about these other exercises. Um, sorry, apps, right? So I have to swipe, you know, two times to get to the weather. And then here is the weather app. Pretty nice. Go into the settings. You can change the brightness. You can change the vibration. Uh, intensity and you can always have you can turn off the heart rate and I wonder if this turning this off would actually improve the battery life for more than seven days um, and notifications during sleep you can probably just want to have that off uh, this is the current version information here so to get to more options you can long press the side button and here you can enable the or disable the screen wake feature which is like theater mode um, and you can also enable or disable notifications. And then if you swipe to the right, this is where your Fitbit Pay uh, card selection is. But let's talk about watch faces. Unfortunately, there's a very few selection of watch faces available. And they show your time, the date, and you know sometimes heart rate or pedometer. Um, but you know 
things like the a weather complication is not available so that kind of sucks i really wish that they would open this to third-party developers so that they can design different types of watch faces okay so for notifications i'm using android and it's fantastic i'm really impressed with the the real estate on the screen i'm able to read notifications on such a small watch swipe down and here you can see all your notifications uh, and you can see that they're pretty legible so if i tap this i get into more details you can see you can kind of see the title and some more of a description and you always have the option to open the app or play the not notification this notification isn't very interesting because it doesn't have any androids inline action so let's just hit clear and let's go say to the most recent one here now you can see obviously the details um, but what's really cool and i really like this is all the inline action so you can clear the timer this is a transit now app basically it tells you when the next bus is coming and you can hit the refresh button you can open the app you can clear the alert so like refresh for example just sends that sends another notification here now this is kind of like a conversation like a text uh, conversation you can see it's updating a notification for the same context and you can imagine this is a conversation and we're, ch we're chatting and there's just so many text messages but really on the phone on the actual phone device sorry on the actual phone there's just one notification so kind of kind of sucks right but here at least you can just clear the most recent one let's say that's clearing the timer um, this is more like the real clear so clear it and I scroll down and you, you just saw they all disappeared so it's it's good because if you know you clear one of the related notifications all of the other related notifications are cleared as well so it's kind of like grouped in that manner so yeah notifications are really cool and very handy when you want to reply to a text message and uh, you know you can use the quick inline replies and you can customize what you want to say back in the message uh, in the Fitbit phone app now one little annoying thing is the back navigation of the notification so let's say i tap into a notification here and i have all the details and all the cool you know inline actions and whatnot and let's say i want to get out i can't swipe you know intuitively i think i would swipe to get out to leave the notification but i have to press this side button here and it's kind of it's a little awkward so press that press that and I exit and then if i want to get this just exit that right there so I kind of wish they would take advantage of more swipe gestures. Like for example, swiping here would have been nice if I could swipe to the to the right and maybe get my you know uh, weather or some kind of like you know kind of like a Google Assistant where it gives you some contextual information. They could really use this real estate here. So now, this is really important, and it's the always on, sorry, always vibrate feature. And basically, you want to be able to have your phone in silent mode, but still have haptic feedback on this device so to do that you need to enable it and then here it can be silent and if you really want to disable the notifications you just long press the side button and here you can just disable it right now it's disabled you have more control on the device itself so the selection of exercises is pretty limited as you can see um, it doesn't allow you to add any custom workouts let's say you do rock climbing and you want to do that um, track that type of exercise unfortunately you can't do that unlike uh, Google Fit which has you know so many exercises the exercise app is pretty limited and what's worse is that the strength training app or the weightlift app is kind of useless in my opinion and what I mean by useless it doesn't really do much other than track your um, calorie spent the time and your heart rate uh, it doesn't really do anything for you in terms of weightlifting which I think is really unfortunate because the Google Fit app can basically track any type of movement. You know, you're doing a push-up or you're doing, you know, squat. It can detect that and it can count your reps and it can help you by, you know, setting a timer in between your sets. And I really wish, you know, Fitbit could do something like that. I mean, what's the point of having all these sensors, accelerometer, if you're just going to simply track the time uh, of, track the duration of my workout? Like, what does that really tell me? It doesn't really tell me much. I want to be able to, you know, track reps. So this really sucks and you know if they put more you know development into their software i think they could become you know i think they could create something really cool and more innovative than what they have now so i think it i'm just really disappointed with the software for the exercise apps just very very primitive so there's other things you can set your alarm 
device lock is for Fitbit Pay. We'll get into that once we um, set up Fitbit Pay. Here you can change the order of your exercises. Now here you can see the sleep tracking. Uh, so far it's been doing a really good job of tracking my sleep. I haven't tested naps and I really want to test that. It gives you, you know, different stages of your sleep, REM, light, and deep sleep. It's been fairly accurate compared to the Huawei watch, which does a really good job of tracking sleep as well. It detected my nap, but since my nap was less than three hours, it had no reports on REM or deep sleep. Okay, and moving on, here are just your kind of types of exercises that you've done. This is one here was auto tracked, which was really cool because it was longer than 15 minutes. I biked for 17 minutes and just tracked that. Very neat. And of course, this uses uh, your connected GPS. It doesn't have an onboard GPS, it uses your phone GPS. And you know, things like your weight and your water consumption. Unfortunately, you can't do that from the watch. You kind of have to open your phone, um, open this app and then add it yourself, which is, you know, I kind of wish they would expand the software. So like I said, I think the software needs to improve on the Fitbit Charge 3. Now for battery life, it's rated at seven days and I've got the watch on Tuesday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So about four nights so already. Right now I'm at 55% battery. So we're looking around eight days if the battery rate continues. And I've been using this watch a lot. I've been doing a lot of exercises, uh, receiving a lot of notifications and just playing around with it a lot. So, so far I'm pretty impressed with the battery life and I think it will hold the seven day battery life. I'll keep you posted if that isn't the fact. Now for heart rate and step accuracy, I haven't seen any crazy issues. I'm not um, crazy particular on this because I think these watches are more for consumer based, you know, general based trends. They're not going to be, you know, medical grade devices. So um, it's been doing a decent job compared to my Huawei Watch 2, so no issues around that. I just really wish they give us access to the SpO2 sensor. The charger is kind of interesting. It has a clip mechanism instead of a typical mag magnetic mechan uh, clipping mechanism. And you have to just kind of like get it in right. So it's not the best. It does help keep the watch light without forcing it to have magnet. In summary, I think this watch is pretty damn cool. It's super light. It's a minimalist design. Um, doesn't have all those crazy advanced features as a smartwatch, but it isn't as primitive as just a basic watch. Uh, I can live with some of the annoyances like the, you know, the button placement or the lack of always on display, but they really better you know, open, support more banks through Fitbit Pay in Canada. And please give us access to the SPO2 sensor um, tracking uh, metrics and stuff like that. So if they can solve those two items, um, and I think with more software iterations, more updates, it can be a really compelling watch on the market. That's it for now. Um, stay subscribed. I'll post my video about Fitbit Pay once I get my credit card application approved. And thanks for watching. Please give a like and you know share your questions or comments down below. See you in the next video.